All right, so we're looking at uh, packet six, class number four, Friday. Nothing better than a Friday in April, maybe Friday in May, maybe. Now, flashback today, this is what we have so far on the points. Um, we may play, uh, play at the end here for a few minutes. Um, still anybody's, anybody's game. <clears throat> still early on. <clears throat> uh, now I know that in-class kids are playing for bagels, donuts, pizza, that kind of stuff. Uh, but for you guys, in order for you to join in that action, you'd have to show up to school. So if we decide not to do that, then it'd be playing for a, you know, $10 Amazon gift card or something, just something for fun. But uh, we'll look at that here. Remind me, uh, I make them set their alarms for six minutes before the bell. So remind me at 1.50, at 1.50, um, get on there and say, hey, time to flash a little bit. That'll cut our thing short. Today, uh, to keep up with the class, um, we have a Teletubby son today, but today we ended up with, uh, went around and gave uh, one stamp. Uh, third hour got additional stamp because it was a clean sweep in third hour. Everybody did their homework. Second hour, everybody but two people did their homework. So that's pretty good. 50% of my first hour. So you all should be keeping up. That means the front of 6-1 uh, should be done and you should be, you should have attempted seven and eight in the back. Today we'll talk a lot about seven. There's the front. And that's us. That's what we did on the front of uh, six one. Obviously, it should be done by you. You're going to turn it in uh, probably let, probably next weekend because it's going to take us. We go off all kinds of tangents. We kind of have to. Uh, so it's going to take us till um, Friday, probably next week, Thursday or Friday, because with flex day and all, Thursday or Friday to get done with the whole sheet. I think it was about right here at number six that COVID hit last year. And uh, so this is about where we were, where they, where they all took off. And then it was voluntary. And if they liked the grade they had, they could keep it. So um, but then I lost about half my kids and we did the rest of the half that went on from there uh, through this format we're on now. So I'm feeling like this is probably the last thing that they really learned. I mean, we we learned during this, but I wasn't. We didn't have tests, and so that was kind of a crazy idea for the district. So I think you're you're going to benefit now from from here to the end of the year. So yesterday we talked about rolling and print, pure rotation, pure translation, and then rolling friction. Uh, not rolling friction, rolling, uh, what happens in rolling where you stab the ground, but cycloid pattern uh, comes from this, uh, if you follow a point around, it stabs the ground, which means that that is static. That's why we can use, so we use F sub S, not F sub K. Remember F sub K is this thing. Uh, you rub your hands together, that's sliding friction. F sub S is static. The two surfaces aren't touching, aren't sliding past each other. They're touching, but they're not sliding past each other. So the tire is, in fact, in physics problems, it'll say rolling without slipping. It'll always put the, not always, but a lot of times put the terms in there, like on the AP exam, it'll say without slipping, meaning that you use FS and not F K uh, for that, for the tire. Oh, uh, what else? And then yesterday we went through all this. Um, on the uh, comments underneath the screenshots yesterday, I added this. This is, a, this is a picture from a video and I went back and watched it again. And it's from a number file. It's really, it's a good job. It's, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes, but it goes into the history of this. So we're talking Daniel Bernoulli, who was a arch rival of his brother. I think his brother was... Daniel and Johan, I'm not sure of the brother's name. Anyway, the two Bernoulli brothers fought all the time. And so 
uh, this was one of the Bernoulli brothers' attempt to up his brother, and he used something called Snell's law, which is which is a genius, I thought, to prove this to show what the cycloid pattern is all about. Uh, and then even Isaac Newton entered the fray. Isaac Newton at the time was, uh, you know, he was um, retired essentially. He worked for the Queen uh, at the Mint. Uh, but one evening he took this on. He solved it. It took nearly a long time. He, Newton solved it in one night. And the quote is: they were, they were they were trying to get something going between Bernoulli and 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 Newton. And Bernoulli said, "Hey, man, I don't wake up the lion." I will leave it at that. Um, he knew he knew better than to mess with Newton, even though Newton was an old man. Um, so, so that's an interesting. It's an interesting. If you like the history of science, of all these egos, uh, interesting, and and it's got some good math in there too. That's that video is. It's in the comments from yesterday. Okay, so today, now uh, before we get into the rocket, uh, which is number seven. I want to go over this. So we spent time in class on this. So a couple of years ago, I uh, sat down just to show, since we spent so much time on the front of this, to show a car going from, and this is we're talking about, I'm talking about a, the, the generic car I'm using is a, like a 2015 uh, Mustang without the spoiler and without the air dam in front. We'll get into spoilers and air dams next week uh, more. Uh, we keep coming back to this. That'll be drag, lift, uh, you know, all this stuff will just kind of all gets tangled up together for a couple of weeks. Uh, it's hard to talk about just one thing at a time. You have to kind of bring it all in. So here's the uh, Mustang, 2015 Mustang, uh, revving up its engine in this drawing right here, not moving yet. Then, okay, pulls the brake and, and and takes off. So it so it's on its way to a, what it thinks is 160 miles an hour. Let's say it's got a revved up, you know, 400 horsepower engine, and so it's on its way to uh, 160. So initially at 10 miles an hour, uh, you see that the FP there. Oh, and the question is, well, do we need to write this down in my in in our uh, cheat sheet? For the test, I'm going to actually include every 20 mile an hour snapshot uh, in the equation sheet, which, by the way, is already posted on the Facebook group. If you want to look at guide number five, I believe, yeah, guide five, this is already there, but a part of this, portions of this. Anyway, so there's no reason to write it down unless you just want to kind of take some notes as you're going. Remember, the notes this time are for your benefit only. I don't really see them. Uh, but it's probably pretty smart to take some notes uh, on that test coming up, 300 point test in May. So here's this car. Um, and I said it's going, it's trying to get up to 160 miles an hour on I 35. But then my first hour told me that, well, Mr. Asky, you can drive 90 miles an hour in Oklahoma. There's some stretch of highway by Blanchard. And then on the way to Tulsa, you can go like 85 easy. So maybe that's where they're at. Um, but the Autobahn here. So you see a little bit of force of friction back. Now, without that push off force, uh, these two, okay, these two are kind of related because the force of push is coming from, um, let's say, let's just say it's the turnpike, the Tulsa turnpike, okay? It's coming from that pavement. But at the same time, there's a tax being paid, and that is a frictional force between the road and the tire. Uh, yes, you're pushing off, but also it, uh, friction always exacts a tax. Uh, it's like Pac-Man. Uh, friction always costs you uh, in energy. Uh, Pac-Man always eats. So no matter what path you take, friction always eats. Uh, the man always gets his. And so that's what's happening with, uh, with this static friction. Uh, so it's always that backwards force. It depends on how much contact you have. And also the, the it's called vulcanized rubber on a tire, the, the kind of vulcanized rubber um, interface with the, with the uh, pavement. So that's 10 miles an hour. At 20 miles an hour, uh, not much has changed. I start to get a little baby uh, air drag, nothing really to 
nothing really to write home about. Not even, I wouldn't even include it in an equation, um, but it is start to, you start to acknowledge it. At 20 miles an hour, you put your arm out the window, maybe it's pulled back a little bit, not much. Okay, not much else has changed. Uh, normal force is still congruent to mg. Now let's go to 30 miles an hour. At 30 miles an hour, um, now the RA is becoming a bit more significant, uh, this uh, force back, uh, air drag. Remember that we I talked about uh, a couple of days ago where the students measured the room and we found that the air in the room is about 900 pounds. Now, if you're cruising down the road at 30 miles an hour, the air can get out of the way, okay. And so it's basically that RA, this is measuring, um, this RA right here is measuring how, how much air can get out of your way. If it's in a vacuum, it's not there, right? Uh, it becomes a problem as we just keep going up in speed. If we go to 40 miles an hour, now the RA is established at the air drag. Let me show you something. So what I did was I took a um, graph and I measured this for a, for a uh, Mustang. Uh, I measured the, the, the look at the drag coefficient. I think it's around point three, point four, somewhere in there. I forget, it's been a couple of years. The row is a density of air, 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. The area is the profile area. Um, so I went ahead and put numbers in and got this. Uh, so this, the links in my, on my uh, free body diagrams are legit, okay? I just didn't want to say, well, it goes up, it goes up. But remember, RA goes up as the square of velocity. That's why it's a parabola, it's not linear. It's going up as the square of the velocity. Okay, so back to this. At 40 miles an hour, now at 50, that's, that's an important point. And it's different for different cars. But at 50 miles an hour for this Mustang, uh, the RA and the FS are congruent. So I should have a little congruent sign there. I missed. Okay, those two are congruent. Not always, maybe it's 55, maybe it's 64, but depending on the car. But on this particular Mustang, I'm saying it's at 50, 50 miles an hour. And that's kind of rule of thumb, uh, rule of thumb here. That's when we're gonna say that the two are equal, okay? You're getting as much resistance from the air as you are from the road, okay? Now right, let's go to 60 miles an hour. Now notice how quickly RA starts to dominate FS and something new is formed here. 60 miles an hour, we're starting to get a baby lift, just a baby lift, depending on your car and how much it looks like an airfoil, like an airplane. Some cars look like the cab forward design makes the car look like an airplane wing. And the more it looks like a wing, the more the, more the camber up, the more you're gonna get lift. So Mustangs, the, the, we'll, we'll get to this more next week. It's not really Bernoulli, but Bernoulli's part of it. But the air above that Mustang is gonna go faster than the air below. So you're gonna have a lower pressure above than below. Um, notice though, in between 50 and 60, there's a couple of differences. Yes, the RA now is dominant. Uh, the FL starts, and when, as the FL starts, as the force of lift starts, the normal's got to drop because you're not going to change the mass of the car. You're not changing the Earth's gravity. So this must stay constant. So the two forces up must equal the force down. So no longer can you have that congruent sign on the normal. I want to talk about that air drag for a minute. So and we talk about this in class. So, so uh, as I said, the air in the room in the classroom weighs 900 pounds. Um, that's, that has to get out of the way uh, of, of the car. And we, it's harder and harder, the faster the car goes, the more that air kind of compresses. And in fact, when you compress air, you heat it up, right? I mean, I could go this weekend, your homework, there's already no homework, but this weekend, I don't, I try not to give too much homework in April and May on the weekends. I know you guys get busy. So there's no homework this weekend, but, um, but uh, when you go to your fridge, pull your fridge out and then put your hand on that compressor. Uh, be careful, put your finger on that. Uh, uh, stick your finger on there. It gets hot. Uh, that's because when you compress air, it heats up. So um, 
like if, if we were talking about, a, I don't know how we got off of this discussion, but we talked about what if a meteor or an asteroid were to hit Norman, hit Norman High School. Well, we would be, it would not be bad for us. Uh, you'd be sitting there in class and then about 15 seconds later, you'd be eating cookies with your grandma up in, up in heaven because it's going to vaporize because the, the air um, uh, compresses to the point, it just cannot get out of the way. If it's an asteroid that's, say, 50 yards wide, air can't get out of the way. It's got nowhere to go, so it all bunches up, and then all that friction in the air uh, causes it to go to temperature equal to the surface of the sun, so about 5,000 Celsius. And at that temperature, it just vaporizes. It would vaporize uh, Norman High, uh, the concussion wave alone. Uh, you'd be vaporized. So you wouldn't really, it wouldn't hurt. That's the good news. Um, if you live in Dallas and you, you'd, you'd watch the mushroom cloud as it hit, and then you'd start to watch the atmosphere catch on fire. That was one of the fears when we did nuclear tests uh, in, in Trinity, New Mexico. Uh, there were some scientists that thought that it might catch the atmosphere on fire and cause some kind of chain reaction and rain down fire on parts of the, of the United States. Didn't happen, but, but with this thing, yes. Uh, that's what happened to the dinosaurs. Uh, it, rained down, um, it rained down fire on the dinosaurs for two or three hours. Okay, anyway, that all came from, that all comes from this air, this RA, that, that whole little side note discussion is that rather innocent looking air drag, which the further, faster you go, it becomes, as you saw down here on this graph, it, it's exponentially gets bigger. So I just pull these arrows at the, she's down in the kitchen. I, she was outside, but she got muddy, a little, a little muddy in the back. But I, she hadn't eaten yet. No. Okay, my wife came home, feed pepper. Um, so like when I'm looking at 50 miles an hour, I take this arrow right here and I just dragged, when I was making this, I just dragged it up. So that is that same arrow right there, okay? So th this arrow, the R is gonna grow exponentially. All right, so that's 70 miles an hour. Let's look between 60 and 70. Uh, now the force of lift's getting, getting more substantial. RA is starting to dominate FS. Uh, let's go to 80 miles an hour. Uh, once again, continues. Now let's bump over here, a little break there. Now 90, let's look at 90 and 100. And 100. Look at the difference. So notice this FP is not really changing, the force of push. You're still putting that amount of you know, torque on the wheel, still getting the thing to go forward. But now um, at 100 miles an hour for this particular car, oh, 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 I forgot, okay, okay. Force of lift, we haven't ever done this one. Let's go over here. Force of lift, the blue, and there's no reason to write this down, and it'll be on the equation sheet unless you just wanna jot some things down. But I, I put these side by side or one on top of the other because I want to point out how close the formula for the lift is, or the, the formula for the force of lift is as the formula for air drag. Well, the reason is uh, we're still messing with um, the same air molecules. Um, and lift and drag have a lot in common. Uh, you're, you're cutting through the air, so you have that same row, the one half on the front. Remember, this is empirical. The difference, one of the differences is, okay, so you have a drag, you have, they say all this drag coefficients, um, but the wing area, the A there in, in a drag is profile area, the A in lift is wing area. So it's kind of the air, the, the area the, that the uh, air is blowing over. And then once again, though, the main thing is it changes as a square of the velocity. So back to this graph again, back to this, this setup, Oh, I'm buffering. Okay, back to this. If I come down here, I can also plot uh, the force of, and I'll put all this on the screenshots. I can also plot the force of lift versus time. And you see that's also exponential. So lift is growing um, as well exponentially. So 90 and 100, uh, and then we go to 110. 100 to 110, now look at it. Now at 110, lift 
is as much as, remember, this is telling you this normal force, uh, this normal force char is telling you the amount of, okay, this is um, indicating uh, how much contact you have with the ground. To have a normal force, you have to have this. You have to have solid, solid contact. And we do, car, ground. So indicating how much contact is normal force. Sometimes modern day would call it contact force. Contact force is a better descriptor, but historically we say normal because normal is perpendicular. So at 110, now let's go 110. What 110 though, that's about where lift and, and contact are about the same. And then at 120, now when I was driving my RX-7, I was testing it out, a stone sober. Uh, this is uh, 1983, um, just in that Wankel engine. Uh, I had it up to 122 uh, on this. There's a stretch of road up by Palm City that nobody's ever on. So I felt fairly safe, but the thing was, and I <laughs> did not include the, <laughs> Did not include the wife on this one. She would have been screaming at me the whole time. So she, she was not. She wasn't my wife. At that point, she was my fiance. Yeah, um, we broke up and came back. We broke up. And I think that at that point we were together. Um, so around 120 on this on a Mustang. Uh, notice that the lift now is not, now as long as you have a normal force, uh, as long as you have this, you are in contact with the ground. But I could feel it. You could feel the lift. Don't ever do this. It was stupid. I was young. Um, uh, but uh, I, you, can feel, you can feel losing control of the car. And because if you don't have contact with the ground, you cannot Notice how small, some I haven't talked about, but notice how small that FS is getting. See, it's getting smaller and smaller, and then it's almost, which means that you cannot, you just don't have control of braking systems. Um, so that's at 120. Now we go even further on this, and let's go 130, 140. 130 miles an hour, now the force of lift, normal forces, you're losing contact with the ground. And then at 140, you're still in contact with the ground, but why can't you go, why can't this car go to 150? Question. I'm looking at the screen. Why can't this- Would it leave the ground? It would, well, the normal force is still there. There's still contact at 140, but look, look what else is on there at 140. Why can't you go any f faster? Oh, look, the air drag would be bigger. Right? Air drag and force of push are equal. And so that's right. So there's the two uh, Facebook or, or Zoom points. So, so the, the air drag and force of push are equal. I don't care if it's a 500 horsepower engine, you can't, you can't, if the air is not getting out of the way, it's not getting out of the way. And so you're stuck at 140 is the fastest you can get this car. I thought, I thought I can get it to 160, but just the, the free body showed me that I can't, I can't go above 140. Unless maybe you're in Denver or something where the air, where the, where the density of the air is lower, maybe you can get up to 150 then. Okay, and basically you're looking at, at just the tip of the st of static friction. So you are about to lose control of your car. I think at one, 160, that normal force goes away totally. It's almost gone away. So I wanted to walk you through the whole thing. Um, I'll put, I'll include the screenshots on this one, uh, but I think it's interesting just to kind of walk through on a car, all the different forces involved. Okay, any questions on that before we continue on? I wanna to get to number seven. Seven was the main thrust of class today. So we sent everybody to the board uh, to do seven. So I'm gonna pause this and then let you all uh, try it. I'll give you some hints. Well, uh, I will pause it in a second, but let me give you a couple of hints. First hint on this, there are three forces. 
Uh, second hint, let's say direction of motion is 75 degrees, right? I'm going to, to help us out here so it's a little more clear. I'm going to erase the, this part. I'm just going to erase all that. I'm going to erase everything but the X, Y axis. We need some room. Okay, so there's three forces. The other thing is you want to establish your DOM and the direction of motion it said was uh, 75 degrees. And so whether you go upper left or upper right doesn't matter. I'm gonna go upper right. So protractor or something, but just guesstimate if you have to. 75 degrees, that's close enough. And then this is not a big fat arrow like it is in a simplified just car down the road. This thing's about to get more complicated. It is a dashed line, dashed. Okay, and that's my DOM. Uh, you establish your positive. You establish, okay, you put a little arrow there, it's fine. You establish that, if you wanna write DOM, you can. But you establish that as the positive direction. Therefore, this X is positive and this Y is positive. Uh, it's important for the reader that you do that. And this is 75 degrees. Okay, so now I'm gonna pause it here in a minute and I want you to um, come up with the three force vectors on your own, no one's watching you. Uh, do it in pencil maybe, just in case we have to change, probably will. Only had one group get it right today. And I think because one of those students is getting tutored and I think the tutor, tutor or help them, which is fine. I got no problem with that uh, last night. Um, so three forces here, and I will give you a hint. Um, one of them is gonna be 75 degrees. One of the forces is gonna be 80 degrees. I know 80 isn't it, you'll see why. Um, heck, I'll give you another hint before I turn you loose. I'll even do one of the forces for you. It's in our Earth's atmosphere. Hey, yeah. that's like the free bingo card, uh, free bingo slot. You get MG, all right? So there's one of your three forces. You got two more forces now. I even told you about 75 and 80, okay? And then if you think, you feel bold, go ahead and write the equations, what you think the equations are in pencil. No one totally got the equations right today. Some people got close. Okay. So I am going to now pause this and you work for a minute. Okay, so we're back. Um, now, one of them's easy because air drag, and I hold up a rocket in class, we have these rockets. But air drag on a rocket, if a rocket looks like this, the air, if the rocket's coming at you, that's, that's the direction, say it's like this. Um, then the air, the area is that profile area. Well, it's like the last thing you see when it's in the eye. Well, that's a circle, okay? So it's not, the A is not very big. So really, drag for a rocket uh, is pretty low. So even though it's going, it's going very fast. The rockets we launch in uh, May, uh, normally in May, um, are going at about Mach 1.3 in about two seconds. They go from zero to about 800, 900 miles an hour. So they, so the speed is really high, but the A is low. The uh, profile. So put a little air drag back like that, it's probably good. And that yeah, air drag always uh, opposes motion, always. RA is always direct and opposite the direction of motion. Okay, so, so then why, why not make it like this? Why not go ahead and just put like it says, and students will do this on a test, but why not just make uh, 
this be the force of thrust? And by the way, that's F sub T sub capital T. We're going to derive the thrust equation, but it'll be Monday. We didn't get to it today in class. Why, why isn't that, why is that incorrect? Is it because, oh, go ahead. Uh, would thrust have to be like upwards instead of diagonal? It's not, uh, now buoyant force, buoyancy is always straight up, okay? Lift isn't necessarily, lift is always, there's no lift here, there's no wings on this, uh, but lift's always perpendicular to direction of motion. But force of thrust is not, force of thrust can be in any direction, wherever that rocket's going. So you're not limited there. Um, would it be because it's launched at 75 and then it like gets to 80 like as it keeps going up? But I mean, it's not because they're vectoring it or anything. It's because it has to be that way. And I, I can show you um, cruise missiles being launched from battleships and you'll see this. They're launched, but, they're, but their actual angle is greater than their angle of directional motion. And the reason is, let me kill this. Anybody else want to hazard a guess? A couple of good points brought up. Uh, the reason is a head to tail method. Head to tail. This is where head to tail comes in. I made that rocket really heavy. <laughs> what is this, a Saturn V? Oh well, I made it heavy. So I got to deal with that heaviness now. It's because of that downward. When you add up the vectors, here's the main point for today. When you add up those three blue vectors, it says it's accelerating, so I have to end up with an acceleration at 75 degrees. So in order to get that, I got to make, I picked 80, but it could have been 85 or whatever. Uh, I've got to make, I'm going to make it like that. Because I made my, I'm going to make it longer. Okay, hold on, let me get stuff out of the way. This is the, this is the key point. Main reason why you're here today. So I'm gonna bump it up to, I said 80, but I'm gonna go 84. Yeah, just cause I made my tag on. Okay, so this is what it's gotta look like. Something like that. This is where head to tail comes in, ruler, protractor, and I'm buffering. And we're buffering. Buffering. Okay, I took this to Anna Moore yesterday. I said, Anna, help me out here. Man, I get buffers all the time. She said, well, you're already doing everything you can. You just got to live with it. Ask you, leave me alone. Okay. So I'm going to go a little further up. All right. There's my force of thrust. And the reason I did that is because when I add these up head and tail, let me get some ghosts in there. When I draw the ghost of MG, Bum, 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 MG always points straight down by definition. So when I put that ghost in there, that's supposed to be the same length. Looks like it went a little too far, but. Okay. I mean, I, if I was doing this, I, I would get rulers out. If you look at 6.3, number two, look at, if you flip your packet to 6.3, number two, that's what, we, that's what we're doing there. It's just sort of a preview. So this is um, our, this is MG down, a uh, ghost of it. And then I do the ghost of the RA, which I just redraw it and it stays at the same angle, but I bring RA there here like this. And then the resultant, uh, which goes to the very beginning, very end is my summation of forces. So my summation of forces looks like this arrow. That is my summation of forces. And there is a summation of forces because there's acceleration, F equals MA. Okay, so now I'll write the equations. I'm running out of time here. Now to write the equations for this, uh, and you wouldn't normally do both of these in the same graph. If you look at 6.3, you'll see on one side, we do head to tail and the other side, we do free body. They don't normally mix in the same graph like this. Uh, but now let's do our equations. So um, for the X, 
Um, I had them uh, try this on their own. I'm making this, I made this angle for the, uh, for the force of thrust. I turned that thing into like 84 degrees. Okay, so for my X, and now we're, we're not tilting the axis, don't do that. Uh, just keep the axis of the R. So remember, X is cosine, Y is sine. So I have, um, yeah, I'm getting low on time. So I have, uh, I have uh, force of thrust times cosine of 84 degrees um, uh, minus RA times cosine of 75 degrees. Remember, X is cosine, Y is sine. Uh, and then what about the MG? MG? And by MG? What about my MG in the X? You don't include it? You don't because it's not in the X. The MG is just in the Y. So we say that equals MAX. We're done. Now you go to the Y. So with the Y, I'm looking at the vertical components. So now I have uh, FT sine 84 minus. Now, if you're ever adding air drag, you made a mistake. It always is taking away energy from the system minus RA sine 75 minus all of MG, and that equals MAY. Okay, there's my equation. So you just, I don't know if you notice this or not, but the class just got harder. But we're starting to get serious about free body diagrams finally. Okay, now we have enough time uh, in the last few minutes to play a little, uh, a little flashback. I think that's it. Hold on, see if there's something else. No, uh, we talked about this in one hour, but we'll come back to drafting and uh, NASCAR and all that. We'll come back to that Monday. Um, okay, if the majority of the kids in class did it, then we'll talk about it. If not, then I don't want to get us too far ahead. Okay, so now stop the sharing. Now I'm going to play songs and you in your chat, you tell me what they are. There's no theme here. Oh, okay, okay. Here we go. I'll try and play this about the same songs they got. Uh, was the theme was '90s rap, but then nobody would, nobody could get it. Okay, so we'll throw a little bit of that in there. All right, first one up. You ready? Now you type in. You can't, can't shout it out. You got to type it in. And the artist, if somebody types in the name of the song, and somebody else types in the artist, then the artist wins. All right, ready? First one up. Okay, we'll start with this old classic. I'm watching the chat. No? Okay, tough start for everyone. That is Everyone Hurts by R.E.M. Okay, now let's go to this one. You get this one. Let's get one you can get. Get you a good, good start here. Ready? All right. Uh, same song, different version. All right. Uh, Eric got that one. Um, Gangster's Paradise by Coolio. He got both the top. Uh, let's make a new rule up. If you can get the title and the artist, no, 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 it makes too complicated. Anyway, he wins that point. So he's on the board now. All right. Now the rule I'll never will play to you. Okay. This is another, this is another, uh, nineties. Uh, this guy sold out though lately, but used to be, I used to kind of like him. Here we go. Yo, let's do this. Now, I can't see you guys. I'm assuming you're not Shazamming. That's you're on the honor system here.
Now this guy sells insurance on uh, on TV. What a sellout. Uh, that was iced tea, iced tea. Okay, okay, okay. I'll get one you get. You get this one. Ready and go. That's all you get. No? Keep going then. I think you've heard of this one. Okay, I'm starting to worry about you guys. I don't like your little games. Don't. Thank you. Okay, Sophia got Taylor Swift. That is correct. Uh, let's go to this one. How about this old classic? Strange fruit hanging. On the but on the leaves, I'll take it. Oh, unless the modern give. Okay, you got it, Kanye. Okay, that's Kanye back when he was good. Although, he's done a few things lately that's not too bad. This was pop. No, let's go to this one. Uh -huh, this my shit. Oh, sorry about that. All right, so Gwen Stefani, uh, Eric's kicking butt today. He's got three already. Okay, we got a few minutes left. Let's try this one. Sophia, come back in strong with gorillas. That's on Melancholy Hill. Now, I suppose it's okay to bring the parents in for some of these. Uh, if they're in the background, they can come in and play. They could be your family, you know. Maybe a big brother or sister, I don't know. Maybe little brothers. Let's try this one. Havana, uh, but somebody could steal. Oh, Sophia stole it. Hmm. No, I'll tell you what. Let's not steal it. But you both get a point. Okay. That's okay. Let's go to this one. We got two minutes left. Okay, Drake. Eric is starting to uh, take over here on some of this stuff. Let's see who has some sophistication amongst you. It's the opera. Worth five points. Oh, I didn't think so. Okay, that's uh, Henrik Gorecki. Uh, we got, let's go way back, way back. Okay, obviously it's Tootie Fruity, but who sang it? Tootie Little Richard. I oh, I gotta know the old stuff. Okay, maybe one or two more. Uh, I'll throw this one out there. Halo by Beyonce. Okay, so uh, Sophia's good at coming in and grabbing the second point on those, uh, but Anthony does get one on that one. And finally, uh, last one. Let's make it a good one here. Uh, oh, okay, here we go, here we go. I'll take the name of the song or the, I don't think anybody's, no one's gonna get the group, but you may get the song. <laughs> All right, Sophia got it. One, one last point if you want to get the other tokens. <laughs> Io knows his old stuff. All right, that was the tokens. Very good. Okay, so that was a little flashing. I will I will add these up and put the new scores up uh, on the flashback um, icon there. So good job, everybody. Uh, I'll see you guys. Um, see you guys Monday. Really no homework this weekend. Just take the enjoy the cold in the rain <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys you guys can take off any time I'm going to start right now. Stick around questions all right have a good weekend yep I wasn't supposed to record that no